Hi, in this video we're going to be taking a look at uh, Ekin's low cost microscope which has literally just come through the uh, door just now and this is a low cost microscope that's come direct from Ekin's on AliExpress. Um, you probably saw my previous videos on the Ekin's microscope as well as my own Amscope microscope um, which I bought at the start of the year. And this model looks for all the world identical to the Amscope microscope that we've just got sitting here in terms of the uh, the microscope head itself. Um, so from what I can see this looks like the Amscope SM745 MTP which is currently selling for about $360. And this whole kit with the uh, stand is coming in at about $300 or somewhere around that price point. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if this is actually the same device and whether there's some cost savings to be had. So I'll just unpack all of this and then we can take a closer look. So these are the items that are in the box. First of all we get this metal stand, so a relatively lightweight stand because the microscope is cantilevered over this. So actually um, we don't need a big heavy base because, uh, because the working area is here, this isn't going to be able to tip over because the microscope isn't going to sit all the way out here. We get the microscope head itself, and from what I can see, this is definitely identical to the Amscope that I've got sitting right here. It's got all the same markings, it's got exactly the same build quality, so this is really nice. Uh, really, um, you know, really well built, actually. I'm quite happy with that. We get the adjustable yoke that holds the head in place and attaches to the poles. We get this ring light along with a AC adapter. This is a European one, I think it comes with US and UK, um, but I'll just be using a standard adapter that I've literally just got sat here. Then we get two eyepieces, and these are the WF10X slash 20 ones, so two of those, along with the two eye cups. And these are the slightly more comfortable type that wrap around near your eyes, uh, but those are really nice. And then you get your three lenses which you attach to the bottom of the microscope head and through a combination of these three lenses and the continuously variable zoom on the side here that gives you your full 3.5 to 90 times zoom through the eyepieces so this um this all looks pretty good um, we've also got the camera attachment but uh, we will try using this but from my past experience with uh, you know, this is the same one that the Amscope came with, and it was pretty terrible in terms of the quality. It's got no optics, it's literally just a tube, so you start to get chromatic aberrations. So we will have a look at um, the correct item to use, although I don't actually have it here, um, and uh, we'll discuss that a little bit later on. So I'm just going to assemble this all now onto the stand. So in previous videos I had a few comments just asking how the ring light attaches to these microscopes. You can see on this one there's uh, a couple of rings which the ring light can attach to. So these have these sort of grub screws and you can just slide it onto the bottom of the head here and then just screw it in and that holds it in place quite nicely. I know some of the earlier Amscope microscopes had a sloped um, part at the bottom of the microscope that meant that you needed an additional adapter to attach the ring light to. This one doesn't have that so this uh, just attaches directly and really quite rigidly. When you're putting the eyepieces in you do want to try and do it as quickly as possible to avoid getting uh, dust into the port. So uh, only take the cap off when you're ready to insert it. And then the actual um, eye cups just sort of wrap around the eyepiece itself. And then they're on there quite firmly. So let's just take a little look at the microscope setup. So we've got the stand here with a pole at the back and then a pole coming forward which holds the microscope head in place. On the pole we've got this little ring here and what this does is you set it to a minimal level and then tighten it up and then if you accidentally lose control when you're adjusting the settings or if it's not quite done up properly it stops the whole microscope from slamming into the workbench and damaging the optics. Then we've got this little block at the top here and you twist this and then you can adjust the height up and down and then we've also got another knob at the back and that allows you to slide the microscope in and out. You do have to use a little bit of caution because if you overextend it um, the whole thing does start to tip. So uh, really you probably just want it so that the microscope head is just in front of the metal base or take it all the way back so that you're working on the metal base. Then you've got a little adjustment here 
So you can use this to adjust the microscope up and down like this. So you can have it at uh, an angle that is convenient for you. And then we've got a knob at the back here, which once you've set this up, this is really the only setting that you need to change. You can undo the knob and then slide it up and down with the fine adjustment just here. Next up, you've got the focus adjustment. So if you need to adjust the focus, you've got um, the knob here at the side, which just um, brings the rack up and down to allow you to fine tune the focusing. And then we've got the microscope head itself. So on the microscope head, we've got this little grub screw here. This allows you to um, adjust the angle of the microscope head. Generally, you want it facing forward on a setup like this. Uh, but if you are using it at a weird angle, it does mean that you can have the base off to one side and twist this to an angle that suits you. Then at the side of the head, you've got a knob here that controls the continuously variable zoom. So you can change this from anywhere from 0.7 zoom all the way up to 4.5. Where I tend to have this is uh, with a 0.5 Barlow lens at the bottom and this set to about 1.5. That seems to give really good results. Then in terms of the eyepieces, you've got individual focus adjustments. So if you have um, different eyesight in each eye, you can individually adjust these to your comfort. Or if you are using glasses, you can set them to the um, same level or whatever's comfortable there. Get rid of the eye cups and then you can just look close up with your glasses on and still see perfectly fine. But you just twist the knob here and you can see the eyepiece just adjusting slightly. But uh, that makes a huge difference to the focusing. Um, you know, So you can really correct for quite a wide range of different eyesights. And then at the back of the microscope, we've got the camera port. And this is a simulfocal microscope. So what that means is you can see through both eyepieces at the same time as shooting um, video out through the camera port. And also, once you've adjusted the setup properly, when you adjust the focus for your eyes, the focus for the camera is automatically adjusted. So you don't have to start fiddling around with things individually. You set the camera port at once, and then it will always be at the same focus as what you see through the eyepieces. So just set it up once and that's done. And then just attached to the top of that, I've just got the camera. So to record the microscope images, today we're going to be using the Heyer HY2307 C-mount camera, which I did a video on quite a long time ago. And then we've got the camera attached to the microscope with the supplied accessories. And then if we take a look at the bottom of the microscope, we've got the times one lens, and that's giving us about 100 millimeters of working distance. So let's take a look at what the image quality looks like. And here we have a SOT23 part. And as you can see, that looks pretty clear and the image through the eyepieces is absolutely perfect. So we're only illuminating the board with the supplied ring light and we're getting really good quality images, I think, um, from, the, um, from the camera and the accessories and everything that's attached to it. Now, on the Amscope, I actually had trouble getting good image quality using the supplied accessories. Uh, for some reason, on this one, the port that we've got here, I've adjusted it quite low. On the Amscope, I had to have it right up at the top, and I think that was what was causing a lot of the chromatic aberrations, uh, because now we're getting significantly better image quality that I was getting previously. Uh, but yeah, this, this looks really good. Let's try zooming in all the way with the times one lens. So here we are at full zoom with the times one lens at the bottom. So this is times 45 zoom. And you can see here, there's the plated through hole. And this is giving us really good detail, really good image quality. You can see the silk screen just along the edge there. Uh, but absolutely no complaints there. That seems to be uh, doing the job absolutely perfectly. The working range does get decreased slightly at full zoom. So I'm now at about 80 millimeters from the PCB. Still enough to solder by. Um, but actually, I don't think you'd ever need this level of zoom while you're soldering. So what I'm going to do now is swap out the lens at the bottom for the 05 times lens, which is more of what you'd normally be using for general purpose soldering work. 
Right, so I've just put the 0.5 times zoom on the bottom of the microscope and we're looking at uh, 200 millimeters working distance. So we've doubled our working distance by decreasing the magnification by half. So let's take a look at what the image quality looks like now. So we're getting quite a wider area of the PCB in shot here. It's probably slightly too zoomed out for soldering these 0805s and the SOT23 parts, but for something like this optocoupler, um, you can see we've got enough detail to see what we've been able to do without being excessively zoomed in. Let's take it into a slightly more comfortable zoom level. So this is point, uh, sorry, this is times 3.5 zoom. Let's zoom in a little bit. And now we're at approximately times 10 zoom. And this is what I tend to use quite a lot on my microscope for soldering these 0805 parts and the SOT23 parts here. This gives us sort of enough room to be able to see what's going on around the component and where the soldering iron is and get a bit of context without being excessively zoomed in. And we've not really dropped our working distance at all. We're at 180 millimeters now, so we've still got plenty of room under here to get our soldering iron in. But this is really quite a comfortable zoom level and you can see the image quality is absolutely perfect. It happens to be really good with this combination of optical parts in the camera path and through the eyepieces we're getting absolutely perfect imaging. And there we go. So this is now at 22.5 times zoom. And you can see this is just a little bit too much really. So here's our SOT23 part and you can't really get it all in shot. Um, so you wouldn't really be that good for soldering. We've not changed our working distance very much. It's only about 170 millimeters now. So I tend to always keep the 0.5 times Barlow lens on the microscope because this is the perfect um, sort of combination for soldering because at minimal zoom we can solder some of the larger parts even our dip packages and that kind of thing can be soldered really easily and then we can zoom right in for micro soldering on O2 O1 components or very fine pitch components um, and most of the time you tend to stay somewhere in between. So just a quick side by side of the two microscopes I know a lot of people will ask for it uh, there are a few differences, so I was mistaken, it's not an identical copy. First of all, the eyepieces are very slightly different, you can see the shape's different. Also, the ampscope on the left here has a little lock so that you can uh, stop the zoom being adjusted, but I'm not really sure why that would be useful. Other than that, there's a couple of differences in the mouldings, but uh, certainly no significant differences. And I've just sat down and had a look through the eyepieces side by side. And really, I'm not seeing any difference between the two. I can't really tell the difference. So uh, certainly, I think, given that this is coming in at a cheaper price, you're definitely getting good value for money and not really compromising anything. Obviously, this one has the boom stand, and you can buy this from Ekins with a boom stand. This is just a lower-cost setup, a little bit more compact, a little bit lighter weight with this metal base. And one thing that you can do is... This pole is just attached to the base with a bolt through the bottom. If you did want to get rid of this, you could actually just drill a hole through your workbench and put the bolt straight through into the pole. And that would mean that you've got a nice flat area without any type of base in the way. You'd just have your pole sticking up with the microscope sticking out of it. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to the listing in the description down below. It's a link direct to the Ekins microscope store. So uh, that's where this came from, and they are the manufacturer or the distributor of it. Now, I did get this free of charge for this video and any future videos that I want to use it for, but I am actually giving my honest opinion of this. And if you watched my video on the Amscope microscope, you'll know that I was actually considering buying one of these Ekins microscopes in the first place. The only reason I went for the Amscope is because uh, I did actually just really like the black look to it. So Amscope at the time were the only people offering a microscope in black like this. So I ended up spending a whole lot more money on this. Um, so it's really nice to see that actually, had I gone for a cheaper model, um, such as the Ekins, I wasn't compromising really on any quality. The optical quality is absolutely perfect. Obviously, you can buy it with a boom stand if you want the boom stand. It is really quite nice on the Amscope but it's also extremely heavy and really takes up a lot of room, which is why I quite liked the uh, articulated arm on the other Ekins microscope. This is just another offering, quite a lightweight offering, and can quickly be moved out of the way when you're not using it, and then you can just plank it on the bench 
uh, when you want to do some soldering. So uh, I really quite like this. I do think it's uh, really quite good. So hopefully you found this video useful. Leave your comments down below, thoughts, um, you know, praise, criticisms, whatever. Uh, but uh, until next time, thanks for watching.